welcome, welcome everyone to the All About the Sanborn Junior Program virtual Zoom. We are so, so happy to um, get to chat with you tonight a little bit about the Sanborn Junior Program. And um, it's just so nice to see all of your faces, even in tiny squares, and, and see where everyone is coming from, coming uh, to the program this summer. And so for those of you who do less Zooming these days than we used to, uh, the best way to often kind of see the presentation is in speaker mode. It'll just let whoever's talking space be the biggest face on the screen. And so it's also really helpful to stay muted um, in case your dog is barking or someone's at the door uh, to keep that kind of background noise down. But it is so good to see you all, and we are going to introduce some of the year-round team who is here tonight, starting with my friend, Ariella. Thanks, Krista. I'm Ariella Roggi. I am the director of Sanborn Western Camps, and I am delighted to see so many of you that I have known from summers past as well as years past, but also so many new faces and unicorns and the whole thing. So this is this is a very exciting show and I'm gonna pass it on to my friend, Polly. Wait, Ariella, I oh. forgot. I really, I've been thinking about this question all day and maybe it's because I'm hungry, but I just wanna know, what's your favorite kind of French fry? Ooh, my favorite French fry. Well, I'll be honest, Krista, I have a penchant, which means a, a love of um, breakfast burritos. So I love, I love fries. You know, people don't usually take home fries. Like people don't say, hey, I'm going to bring my fries home um, from the restaurant because they kind of get gross, except if you chop them up and then put them in a breakfast burrito, then they are a-okay. So those are my favorite kind of fries. Yum. So good. Um, well, hi, everybody. I'm Tully Sandbaum. I'm the junior program coordinator here. So I work a little bit at High Trails and a little bit at Big Spring to uh, support all of the junior counselors and all of the junior campers. Um, my favorite fries are thick cut. They are lightly breaded. They're fried, obviously. And then they are tossed in cilantro and garlic. Ooh. They're so good. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? My name is Oliver Fisher. I'm the director of Big Spring, the boys camp. You know, I my favorite fry, we're going to go with animal style fries from In-N-Out. Excellent. <laughs> And uh, my name is Krista. I am the director of High Trails and French fries are my favorite food. I have a whole ranking system and like way of judging fries based on where I go. But some of my favorite fries these days are carnitas fries from a Mexican restaurant that's just down the street from my house. So that's a little bit about fries, which I love. But now we're going to talk a little bit more about the junior program, which I also love 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 so we are going to start um with ariella kind of just sharing a little bit about camp as a whole yeah thanks krista so you know for those of you who don't know much about sanborn um our camp is 75 years old this will be our 76th summer now shocking as it is i have not been around for all 76 of those years I have only been around for about 25 of those years. And um, I was a camper and I was on staff and I came back to Sanborn after teaching high school English for a number of years because I love our mission. And our mission at Sanborn Western Camps has four big parts that we like to talk about. It's to live together in the out of doors, building a sense of self, a sense of community, a sense of the earth and a sense of wonder through fun and adventure. And so everything we do involves that opportunity to learn more about who we are as individuals, how to live and work together in a community, um, how to be connected to the natural world and disconnected from technology, and then to do everything with a sense of wonder. I will never forget when I was 12 years old, 
I saw my very first shooting star and I was camping at a campsite called the Bottle Gates and it was the most amazing thing I had ever seen. And so many people get to have those sort of outdoor experiences when they're at camp. Maybe it's a sunset, maybe it's scrambling up a big pile of rocks to see an amazing view. Maybe it's tubing down a natural river, um, the South Platte over that's near camp on one of your river trips. Um, the Junior River Trip is one of my favorite things that we do um, because it really embodies that mission that Sandy and Laura started 75 years ago when they started the camp with, guess what, five kids. Look at how many kids are on the screen right now. There are a lot more than five, but initially it was five kids and three of them were family members. And so from there, the boys camp started. And then in 1962, we started the girls camp because all of those boys are coming and saying, I had such a great time at camp. They had sisters, like you all have brothers and sisters too. And sometimes those brothers and sisters wanna to come to camp as well. And so that is why Sandy and Laura started the camps. And then they started the outdoor education center in the fall and spring. And eventually they started an adult conference and retreat center because there are even parents out there that wanted to get outside. So that's a little bit about our history and our mission. Um, but now I wanna talk a little bit about Sanborn Jr. And you know, I know a few things, but I don't know as much as Tully does because she's the director of that program. And so I'm gonna let Tully tell me a few things. Tully, tell me about Sanborn Jr. Sanborn Jr. is my favorite program, Ariella. It is the foundation of our camp program because at this age, this might be the first time that you guys are spending an extended period of time away from home. And you might look at that month long schedule and say, oh my gosh, that's so long. But two weeks is a little bit better. So in these two weeks, you guys are going to get the greatest samplings of all of the incredible activities that we do here at camp. And you're going to do them with your cabin group. And you're going to build really, really strong bonds of friendships. And because you get to try a ton of different activities. When you enter the month long program and you're here for four whole weeks, you're gonna be much better able to figure out what trips and what activities you want to do. Because when you were here as a Sanborn junior, you got to ride horses, you got to go down the river, you got to go rock scrambling, you got to go digging for fossils at the fluorescent fossil beds and all of these beautiful things in between. So I love the junior program because it's such a great opportunity for you to build confidence and independence um, at an age appropriate level. So with that, Krista, do you wanna kind of show them a little video of some of the really cool things they'll get to do this summer? Yes, definitely. Let me fire up that video. Hold please. And if you haven't put where you're calling in from, please throw that in the chat. And then if you have any questions as we're talking, put those in the chat too, and we'll come, we'll circle back and we will answer any of them that come up. The two-week Sanborn Junior Camp provides the opportunity for younger campers to experience the activities at camp as well as the community. My favorite activity is horseback riding and hiking. What I can do at camp and I can't do at home is climb and horseback riding. The campers learn outdoor skills that become the foundation for future summers, while the time they spend in nature helps create connections with the natural world. And all this happens while they're having fun exploring and playing and making friends. I love Sanborn because you make a lot of fun and there's a lot of activities. Ah, I guess we're so excited. Thank you, Krista. So you guys are gonna have tons of time to do these activities while you're at camp. And even though all of the days are slightly different, there is some consistency in our schedule so that you know when things are happening. Oliver, do you wanna go over what a day in the life of a Sanborn Junior Camper looks like? I would love to, thanks Tully. Um, so, um, you know, each day is going to look a little different, but for the most part, um, 
if we're not heading out on an overnight trip and we are just spending the day doing activities, the day is going to look a little bit like this. So uh, at 7.30 in the morning, we'll wake up, get ready for a fantastic day ahead. Um, and then at 8 o'clock, we will have breakfast um, with the entire camp at the lodge. Um, and then 8.45, we're going to go back to our units, make beds, kind of clean up our cabin, brush our teeth, put on lots of sunscreen, fill up our water bottles, and get dressed for morning activities, uh, which will begin at 9.30. And so depending on the day, it may be hiking to a, a cool spot on property. Maybe we're going to be riding horses, doing archery, just exploring property. Um, there's always a little bit of, you know, most of the time there's some time before lunch to potentially hop in the pool. Um, and then at 1230, we'll have lunch followed by um, what we call rest period here. And so it's a you know, time to just kind of lay low, read a book, write some letters home, enjoy some quiet time. Um, and then that, that'll roll into afternoon activities, uh, which start at 2.30 p.m. And so it could be fishing, arts and crafts. Maybe we're going to go to the four-story treehouse and do an egg drop, uh, some nature activities. Uh, we have so many fun activities that we do here. Uh, and then at 5 p.m., we're going to return to the cabin. Maybe, some, maybe we'll shower, um, relax with our counselors. And then we'll have dinner at six o'clock. Um, after dinner, we have our evening ac evening programs, which could be a skit night, uh, games in the field, uh, campfires. Um, and then we're going to prepare for bed and uh, you know fall asleep. Maybe as, as our counselor reads us a story and um, you know reflect on the amazing day that we just had and look forward to the next. Yay! Thank you, Ollie. Um, let's talk a little bit more. That was a really, really awesome rundown of what a day in camp looks like, but let's talk a little bit about what our trips in the junior program looks like. Um, every junior session will go to the river as Ariella mentioned. And so that's an all day trip. So what will happen is you'll wake up at 7:30 ish. You'll have breakfast at camp at 8 AM. And then after breakfast, we'll lather you up in sunscreen. We'll hop in some vans and we'll drive to the South Platte river where we'll spend the whole day and come back to camp, um, right before dinner and then have dinner and participate in our evening program. The same is when we go to the fossil beds. The only difference is when we go to the fossil beds, it's a little bit closer. So after breakfast, we'll again, lather up on that sunscreen, but we'll actually hike all the way there. And we'll stop at a really, really cool place called the Bat Caves. And uh, I don't know if there actually are any bats living there, but there's some really cool rocks for us to scramble on. When we go on our overnight trips, we will again wake up at camp, we'll eat breakfast, our bags will be packed, and we will put on those big girl, big boy backpacks and we'll hike out to our overnight camping site. It's either the teepee camp or our um, original 1800s homestead called Quick's Homestead. You'll set up tents um, and you'll actually sleep in those tents overnight and you won't come back to the cabin until the following morning. Something else that you guys will get to do is horseback riding. And Oliver, I don't know if you guys know this, but Oliver used to be a wrangler. So I'm going to let Oliver talk a little bit about what our horse program looks like for the juniors. Definitely. I love our horse. I love everything we do at Sanborn, but Telly's right. I am partial to the horse program. And so every camper is going to be, is going to have the opportunity to ride a horse four times throughout the session. Um, we have dedicated horses for the junior program. They're so friendly. They love to be pet. Um, and so we, the Wranglers and the horse staff, they'll tack up all the horses, get them ready, make sure, do a safety check, make sure everything is good to go. Um, and then you'll be able to get to know, you know, a certain horse, or maybe you want to try a different horse each time. Um, but we will go on multiple horse rides throughout the session. And again, really friendly, incredible horses that we have for our junior program. Krista, do you want to talk a little bit about what some of our in-camp ac in -camp activities might look like? I would love to. And in fact, I brought a visual with me that kind of helps you get a picture because Ollie talked about what a day in the life of a junior camper looks like. But I drew out a little bit of a calendar that shows you what a like what a session at camp might look like. And so, um, you know, there's opening day, 
of camp when all of your counselors are there waiting for you. You know, they're so excited for you to come and check in and see camp and see your bunk and all of those things. They will have um, decorated your cabin and like made it really homey and ready for you to come. And then um, you'll spend the day uh, or the week at camp doing various in-camp activities. And there are all sorts of in-camp activities. In fact, we make up many of them every summer. And so these are things like hiking to the cool places like our four-story tree house, or it could be going down to the arts and crafts space and doing a craft. Um, it could be all sorts of um, different in-camp activities. Gaga ball is one of our favorites. Um, raise your hand if you have a gaga ball or have ever played. Yeah, awesome. So super, super fun um, game here at camp. So like Tully mentioned, throughout your time at camp, you will get to go on four horseback rides and that kind of varies based on um, your schedule that your counselor will share with you. And then on top of that, you get two overnights during your time at camp. So the first overnight is with your cabin or with your unit. And then the second overnight is at one of those historic uh, learning centers that Tully mentioned. So the Quicks Homestead or TP Camp or one of our other favorite campsites. That's one of the things that you'll hear us mention over and over again is that really we have built out the junior program with all of our favorite things to do, right? It's our favorite trips. It's a sampling of all of the best highlights of camp so that you get a real taste for it throughout your time at camp. Um, as you'll mention, or as you can see in the little drawing, uh, every evening at camp, something is happening that is fun. And that might be a talent show or a skit night or a campfire. Sometimes we go to Vespers where we go to a high spot on camp and sing songs and read quotes and just enjoy being in nature together. And all of those activities we do as a whole camp. So, um, you would go with the month long campers to those activities. So it's a really other fun time to sample those kind of activities that you would be doing in the evening times as well with the rest of camp. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting pretty hungry talking about all of these activities that we're gonna do. So if you have been to camp before, why don't you throw in some of your favorite meals in the chat? And if you haven't, let me tell you about some of ours. I polled a couple of year-round staff before this meeting to figure out just what their favorite foods are. And there are some really, really good ones. We've got chicken tenders. And you might think, well, I've had chicken tenders, but have you had homemade Chick-fil-A sauce? If you haven't, you are in for a treat. We serve Chick-fil-A sauce, we serve ranch, we serve honey mustard, we serve barbecue. Really any sauce that you can think of, you can dip that chicken tender in. My favorite is the pizza casserole. I know that some of you might be saying, Tully, what about pizza? We have pizza as well, but the pizza casserole incorporates macaroni noodles, which are like two of my favorite foods. It's, it's insane, I love it. Oliver's a huge fan of Frito pie and Swedish pancakes. Um, but the best part, you guys, lean in really close, really close. We get dessert two times a day for lunch and dinner. What? And our cook, Nikki, our head cook, Nikki, does an amazing job of taking in dietary restrictions and really any sort of dietary restrictions that your child may have. She will make an alternative for them um, that's just as tasty as the regular meal. Any other really, really good foods that we love, guys? Man, I just love the fact that even when, you know, because we're doing a lot, we're hiking, we're riding horses, you know, we're being more physically active than a lot of us are any given day at school. And so we also have access to, to some snacks. Um, we want people to eat those really good, healthy, you know, meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. and if you get hungry, maybe right before bed, or maybe after you went on a hike, there always um, there's always fresh fruit, granola bars, um, 
cheese and crackers, that kind of thing that that you can help your you can go into the lodge and, and get or have your counselors help you supplement in case in case you're feeling a little hungry because we want everyone um, to have happy tummies while they're at camp. I see the Seward family likes rip and tear bread. I love rip and tear bread too. That's so good. Catal well, Catalina said Catalina said cinnamon oatmeal. So oatmeal bars on Sundays. That, is, uh, that sounds so good. I just had dinner, but I'm like starting to get hungry again. <laughs> well, you might be thinking, guys, what if I want to talk to my family while I'm gone? Do you, Krista, do you want to talk a little bit about communication here at camp? Yes, I would love to talk about that. So when you are at summer camp, the chief way that you communicate home is through writing letters. And uh, for all you parents out there, when I was a junior camper, my mom would send me with um, pre-stamped envelopes. The addresses were already written on lots of paper, lots of beautiful pens. And I did not write a single letter because I was so busy having fun. And so um, what we do as well as writing letters, um, so you do have time to write letters home, but we also have some letters that are um, kind of like Mad Lib style that we all fill out together as a cabin and you each get one. And that letter gets scanned and emailed home because when you're writing letters, it's called snail mail for a reason. And when you're writing letters and sending letters home through the mountains, sometimes it can take many days to get those letters home. So we have that scanned and emailed um, letter sent home, as well as all of the paper mail that you send. And then meanwhile, your camper and all of you campers will be receiving letters every day. So every day um, letters come in the mail and it gets sorted. But once again, talking about that shortened stay at camp and um, how long it takes physical mail to get there, we also have a one-way email system. And that is when parents are able to log into their Camp and Touch account and type out a letter that then gets printed on our printer at camp and folded up and put in the mailbox with all of the other paper letters. So that's a way to kind of be able to communicate and chat uh, a little bit faster or with like a more consistent delivery schedule is that one way email communication. Another way that we as a camp communicate um, with folks at home about all the fun stuff that's happening at camp is through we do a weekly newsletter where we're like this is what's happening at camp and we send those uh, letters out to let you know how the weather's been, what exciting evening activities we've been up to, and what trips have been going around. Uh, and we also upload lots and lots of photos. So every Sunday, we do a big upload of photos so that in addition to these letters that you've been receiving, you'll be able to see the corresponding photos of your camper at camp doing all of the photos. Tully mentioned at the top of the hour that we are a tech free camp, which means that um, we don't bring cell phones to camp or if they do, they get checked in at the beginning um, and we keep them safe for you until you travel home. And so um, we are tech free and we don't have our phones. We just write letters home. But parents, we do still have a functioning office. So we are always happy to answer parent phone calls if you um, have any thoughts, questions, anything like that throughout the session. We have email as well where you can reach out to a director um, who you see on the screen here and all of us are happy to um, chat with you and check in if that makes sense. Okay well let's talk a little bit about who your counselors might be. Oliver do you want to talk a little bit about how we choose our staff to work here at Sanborn? I would love to and um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the call, I was in the junior program my first summer here. And so, um, you know, it's it's such a special program for staff to work in. So, you know, we hire um, a lot of college age, recent college graduates um, who, you know, first and foremost, have a passion and desire to work with kids and explore with kids outside in Colorado. Um, and so we do extensive interviewing. Each staff member will go through two hour long interviews with someone on our year round team. 
um, where we really get to know them, their passions, what excites them about working with kids. Um, a lot of our junior staff, you know, they, maybe some of them are, you know, teaching preschool or elementary school during the year and want to continue working with kids in the summer. Um, and so, again, we'll interview them twice, and then we do driving records, FBI and CBI fingerprints. Um, and so, you know, and we, and we also go through an extensive 11-day staff training to, to make sure that, you know, the staff are ready for the kids to come on the first day and for us to have an incredible summer. Yeah, and I think the bottom line is, especially with the junior program, these counselors want to work with this age group because they are so impressionable and they want to make a lasting impact um, on these kids. And I can't tell you, every, every person that I interview is just is so excited to build relationships and really get to know each and every one of your children and influence them in a positive way. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited and I wish we could push a button and just go straight to summer. <laughs> well, I'm gonna zoom us in a little bit on that because we have some former first year junior campers on this call right now. And one of them is Anna O'Kane. And I'm interested, Anna, like tell a little bit, you know, share a little bit about what it was like to be a first year junior camper and some of the your favorite parts of the experience. Um, so when I went, I was a little nervous when I first came, but then like all like the campers and like the counselors were like so nice. And some of my favorite parts were like the horseback, the horse um riding trips and oh yeah, Gymkhana, which is like the competition at the end of the set it was like at the end of like the session kind of oh yeah and the four-story tree house because like you get to see all the other like names on it because you get to like write your name on it and um I also like the overnight because it's really fun because you get to sleep outside in a tent and yeah those are some of my favorite parts okay thanks Thanks so much, Anna. That's really awesome. Is there anybody else who's on the call? I've got a lot of, I have a lot of squares um, and I'm looking, I see, is that Theodora in there? Um, no, is there anybody else who has been a camper before in the junior program and would like to, to share a little bit about their experience? And while you're thinking about if you want to raise your hand or not, if anyone else has questions, curiosities, wonderings about camp, you can put it in the chat and we'll be happy to chat about any questions you have. I did see a question earlier. There's a question about shopping at camp. So what's the camp store like? Glad you asked because the camp store, it doesn't, you don't have to bring money to camp. Um, you'll actually have, you'll get it in, in the getting ready guide. When you sign up for camp, you'll, you'll kind of get to go over, you know, what we have at the store and, and we kind of divide it into, you know, sort of camp gear, things you might need. Maybe you, um, maybe you forgot a water bottle and you might need a water bottle, or maybe you need a pair of heavier duty socks. Um, or maybe you might want a crazy Creek, which is kind of this fun camp chair. Um, so there's some camp gear. There's what we like to call camp swag. So you get like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or a hat. Those are kind of like wants. They aren't really needs. And, um, and then they're treats. And so then we get to go to the store a few times while you're at camp. It's not necessarily every day, um, but it is a lot of the days that you're in camp. You'll have an opportunity to go to the store um, and get and get some little treat. Traditionally, we have you know, things like Izzy drinks or um, maybe sparkling waters, um, tiny, and occasionally we'll have some tiny like sprites, um, and then maybe some candies or crackers or cookies or something like that. It's usually an after the after lunch experience. Um, even though we do have dessert twice, there are some people who don't functionally believe that watermelon is dessert, but I do. I believe that. And so sometimes we'll have watermelon or strawberries with maybe a little chocolate sauce or for one of those desserts. So we're very cognizant of, you know, sugar 
And that's part of the reason that we also ask, like Krista said, that when you send care packages, they don't have any food in them just because we like to keep people healthy so they can really enjoy their two weeks. Yeah, and I see a question, how do we know our child arrived in Denver and is with the Sanborn group? If your child doesn't have a device of their own, um, wh whatever staff member is picking them up from the airport will be in contact with you when we grab them from the airport. And then when they arrive on property, you will get a communication, whether it's text or email, that they've arrived on camp property. Yeah. And by grab them at the airport, um, we actually get special passes to go through security. So we go through security and meet your camper at the gate. Like as they are stepping off the airplane, there is a camp counselor in a bright orange t-shirt um, who is there to be like, welcome. And so we let you know as soon as possible um, that we have made connection with your camper. And then also a secondary, yes, we have also made it um, safely to camp property. So um, we will talk more about travel and all of your travel and packing questions in a future Zoom. So be on the lookout for that link. Um, but I saw a question about swimming. Oliver, do you want to chat a little bit about how awesome our pools are at camp? Oh, I would love to because that is my favorite spot on camp property are the pools. Um, and so at Big Spring and at, at High Trails, the pools are pretty central to, to camp and you will have multiple opportunities to, to swim. The pool is, um, is staffed with certified lifeguards um, and it's something we obviously take very seriously. Um, and we have water slides, we have fun pool games, um, and we just have a blast in the pool. There's also a question about, oh yes, it, it's absolutely awesome if you bring a camera, my little unicorn. Um, you, it is so great to be able to record all of your experiences. And you know, and some people who have phones, they usually use their phones as, as their camera, but we ask that it, it is nice to bring, you know, a, a, a small point and shoot digital camera so you can really hold on to those images. And then you can get them printed if you want and share them with your friends once you get back home from camp. Ooh, and where do you keep our stuff? And where, and do we have uh, railings on the bunks? Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna show some photos right now of the living unit. So I'm gonna share my screen. And um, so here we go. Um, so this is Juniper. And can everyone see? Yes? Great. Um, so this is Juniper. And you know this is the top. This is the top bunk, and behind you can see some of these uh, lockers. And then on top of them is where we store some of the luggage and backpacks. Will I show a slideshow? Let's see. I believe it. Yeah. yeah, there we are. So this is, like I said, and you decorate it. Oh, we get music too. Good grief. Who knew? Um. So then this is inside and little bunks that are decorated outside of the boys' cabin. Um, and then we have the inside of the boys' cabin, comfortable rustic. Um, again, there's another picture of a bottom bunk at High Trails. And then moving in day, sometimes it gets a little messy in there, um, but that's our screen. And so we'll exit the slideshow and I'm gonna stop sharing because I'm not very good at that. So. I hope you heard what I said, but gives you a little taste of what it looks like inside the bunks and inside of the cabins. Yeah, and uh, speaking of moving in day, like I said earlier, this might be the first time that y'all are spending an extended period of time away from your families. And sometimes that can be a little bit scary. Even Oliver mentioned when he was a camper, he was a little nervous to come. Um, but that's okay. When you get here, your counselors are going to immediately bring you in and your counselors are going to get you so excited. They're going to introduce you to new people and you're going to make friends so quickly that there's not going to be a ton of time for you to be homesick. Now, if that happens and you are feeling a little down and you're missing your family, please don't worry. Our counselors are trained in various different ways to help with homesickness and we have tons and tons of resources to help out with that okay totally and just like tully said you know pretty much everyone from camp directors to counselors to campers 
will feel homesick at one time or another during camp. And that's okay because it means that you have a really cool home that you're missing. And so, yes, um, there are all sorts of things that um, that we do to help you um, when you're feeling a little homesick and help you like get back out there and enjoying camp. One thing I want to mention when we're talking about homesickness, but also when we're talking about what to pack and what to bring to camp is that you, it is, it is on the packing list maybe, but it is a secret requirement that you must bring stuffies. <laughs> okay. Like definitely bring your favorite stuffy or two or three, maybe three max um, for space reasons. But um, I always bring a couple of stuffies to camp because they definitely help me to like give a squeeze when I need it. But also they're just fun to have around. And when I come to your cabin, I'm going to want you to introduce me um, to some of your favorites. So um, those are a couple of things that you definitely want to pack when you're coming to camp. Yes, we are big fans of stuffies. And I see a question about laundry. Do we do we do laundry or do we pack for the whole two weeks? Don't you worry, my friends. Every other day, our laundry team will take the laundry from your cabin and they'll wash it, they'll dry it, and they will fold it up nicely and return it back to you in the same day. So use that packing list, but keep in mind, you don't have to bring a t-shirt for every single day because we will do laundry every other day. Um, I also see Grant is a little worried about bugs in our cabin. We do live in the outdoors, so we might have some bugs in our cabin. With that being said, we can just take them outside and say, hey, this is my house. You live in here. You live out here. <laughs> yeah. And as a kid who grew up in Georgia, um, the bugs in Colorado are not um, very plentiful at all. You're like, oh, wow. That's the first bug I've seen in a while. So it's really nice. We don't have like a ton of mosquitoes or a ton of other like pesky things. Um, so it's really nice that there aren't that many bugs here in Colorado. And it helps us because we're a little bit higher up in elevation um, than most of the summer camps. The kids, the kids do not do their own laundry. You do not need to send laundry detergent. They'll just put it in a big bag the counselors will put it out on the porch and our laundresses will come grab it and they'll do all of the heavy lifting themselves. <laughs> One thing that has a lot of the answers and like in case you weren't taking notes while uh, while we were talking today. One, we will post this video later for reference, but also um, coming to a mailbox near you will be this magazine that we produce every year called the Getting Ready Guide. And the Getting Ready Guide has a copy of that packing list for you. It has all of the answers about travel and airports versus driving and all of these things. Um, and has just lots of really, really good information about camp and about getting ready for camp. So those are coming off the printing presses now and will be um, getting mailed out to you very, very soon. So if you want a sneak peek of the 2024 Getting Ready Guide, it is on our website under the Parents tab. And you can click there um, to find an online magazine version if you can't wait for your paper copy. And it looks like Ariella just threw the link in, in the chat. So if you want to know right now, you could click there and find out now. And so there's a question about how you get to camp. And it would be fun if we'd ride all the horses down to Denver International Airport and everyone to get their own horse and be able to ride on up to camp and pack it up. But in fact, we use large charter buses and we also wore, wore vans. Um, and so we will, like, like we talked about earlier, um, those staff will meet you at the gate and they're in their bright orange Sanborn Western camp shirts. And then we'll, pick up your luggage from the carousel, make sure it's yours, and then get you loaded up on a bus with other staff members. And then you'll drive up um, and it's about, it's about a two and a half, um, two hour and 45 minute drive from DIA. It's about an hour and 10 minute, 15 minute drive from Colorado Springs. Um, and you'll drive up to camp and then the whole camp will be there or everyone who's arrived will be there to welcome you. And it's very, very fun. Opening day, 
is, you know, there's lots of like butterflies and um, like sometimes real ones, but, but sometimes they're just in your tummy because you're a little excited and you're a little nervous. Um, and then you get to camp and everybody's waiting for you and excited to welcome you for your experience um, at Sanborn Junior. Um, this is my baby Yoda. You okay? <laughs> he makes noise. Makes little tiny noises. Love. So we all, you know, like we absolutely love hearing all of your questions and chatting with you because it is dark and cold and winter time and we are dreaming, dreaming every day about summer and about getting to be outside with all of you. And so we just want to thank you for taking some time after a busy school day to come and chat with us. And um, we will type our emails into the chat so that you can uh, send us an email. You always think of your best questions, you know, right after you get the call or like as you're laying in bed thinking, oh, I should have asked this. So please feel free. Give us a call. Send us an email. Um, and we are happy to answer any more of your questions. But for that, I just want to say a huge thank you from all of us for coming. And we hope you have a great night. Goodbye. Thank everybody. you, guys.